Okay, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Psi Unit, which is a way of uh, doing unit testing for scientific models. Um, I think it's a really cool project that um, allows us to sort of bring the scientific method into the 21st century and make sure uh, we know what our models are telling us. So there's two things we want to look at with models. One is are the parameters that we have in our models consistent with uh, literature reported values? And also, do the, uh, does the model predict things that are also observed in the literature? So those are really two ends of, 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 uh, of model validation. Um, here I have a slide of, of some data I produced a long time ago um, and, and, a, and a model curve that's fit on top of it and, and it's from the literature. And the problem with this kind of presentation of, of validation model is very informal. It's really hard to see what I was doing. It would be hard for anyone to reproduce. Uh, so what we really need is something that's very uh, formal and, and very quick to do and transparent so everyone can see what's happening and, and happens continuously during the course of, of model development. Uh, so we can always see uh, where the model stands. And so the basic idea is to take, uh, borrow the idea of the unit test from software development literature. Uh, so unit test is, is just a way to check one little part of a, of a, of a system in this of a program. So in this case, we want to test one little part of a model and we want to build up a bunch of tests that test all the little parts. And so basic idea is that um, the experiments, the experimental data is like input to, to the model and, and the model's output is some predicted observations uh, about what the system should do. And uh, that's sort of our analogy to, to a function in, in programming. Um, so for example, we might, in a model, we might want to eject uh, some current into the soma of a cell. Let's say it's a PVWL uh, neuron uh, from, from the C. elegans. And the output might be a predicted memory potential waveform of that cell. And we want to ask, uh, does that predicted memory potential waveform look like the one that's actually recorded when we conduct the same experiment on the real neuron in the real, in the real world? Um, so we just want to compare, basically do the same thing to the model and to, to the uh, experiment in the, in the real system, and we compare the outputs. So what we want to do is, is build a collection of tests that are just like that, and we want to characterize models by, by how many of those tests they pass, or how well they perform each of those tests. And that's basically what the philosophy of Psi Unit uh, is all about. And you can find more about that, that, uh, that on, on uh, that website. Uh, so just to give you an example, here's from, from, from uh, some geophysics uh, or some solar physics. Uh, is you have uh, a bunch of uh, models here on, on the left and a bunch of tests, which are different solar cycles, and there's some sort of a score that indicates how well each of those models fit. The basic challenges are how you can make this interface with a whole bunch of different kinds of models that exist at different scales or in different languages. You don't want to ask people to have to spend a lot of time developing. And you also know whether the test is fair, if, it, if it, the test is, is the right way to, to analyze that model. And so there's solutions to all of those. Part of those are built on standards. So there's all these different parts to doing model validation. And luckily what we have now is, is standards are corresponding to many of these pieces and we can link all those standards together and, and really make progress. So what we really want is, is domain specific uh, uh, libraries. We, we don't want to just test science in general, we want to test some aspect of, some part of science. So in this case for neuron and ion channel physiology, a library built on top of science is called Neuron Unit. It has a bunch of uh, neuron specific uh, things in it. And this all operates on, on GitHub. So um, you would have a repository of models on GitHub, and you can set up Neuron Unit uh, to simply uh, validate all the models, given you have to configure it correctly, and have that sort of run automatically every time you make a yeah, commit. Uh, you can also do this to run uh, competitions uh, between models. So, for example, you can iterate over a bunch of models and, uh, and, and the tests that you want to, to score them on, and, and simply get sort of a matrix of, of models versus, versus tests and, and see sort of a, a leaderboard. Um, going back to this idea in, in for channel worm here in the open worm project, there's a little Psi unit configuration file that gives you all the configuration information you need to be able to run all of these tests every time uh, a commit is made. And um, the output is um, can be in the form of, of these Jupyter notebooks, which will give you not only the result of the test, but it will give you sort of the, the background. For example, the, that the red curve and the black curve don't quite match, and that's a, that's a failed test. And you can look at these things for every commit, you can see what the, the progress is. If you don't like uh, the model or the tests that are being run, you can always fork things because this is GitHub and run your own tests. And then uh, with the, you discuss with the community whether they should be integrated back into the main line eventually. Um, so it really gives you a lot of flexibility. And every time the model is updated uh, and, and commit push to GitHub, all the tests we run, everything will be stored and, and, and be able to visualize. And the overall performance will be uh, summarized. So here again is from Jupyter Notebook. This is uh, six different uh, model parameters shown on the left side and then the, the, the test scores. Um, and uh, this is all run on, on Travis every time it's a commit, so it's, uh, it's, it's all run sort of in the cloud. And also that the results, the artifacts are being pushed to S3, to Amazon S3 buckets, so people can look at them 
uh, look at the state of the model at any, at any previous point. And uh, we're also in here with Docker so that uh, this, this sort of thing can be run without any, any particular configuration on your own computer. And uh, so that's really all I've got. Um, so thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, listening to me about SciUnit.